welcome everybody. Right, so to start with, I thought a good way to show um, people is the CSV imports um, and how quick um, importing information is into Xero um, using the CSV um, import facility. So um, what I'm going to do is just show you through sales on the demo company how easy it is to import um, using this facility. So I've got some data that I've already imported in, input into a CSV file. Um, <clears throat> if you just then click on the import button there. Um, the thing with Xero, it uses certain templates, so you do have to download their standard template, um, which I've already done for a client. So if you browse and if I show you what the template looks looks like, um, you can see there that I've created some sales, dummy sales invoices and put myself down there as well and you can see that by extend this template will then import um, all the sales information into Xero. Um, the reason I'm showing it on the sales is that you can import anything into Xero where you've got a CSV file. So you can be purchase invoices, it can be expenses, it can be sales invoices, even contacts if you've got contacts in a, a CSV file on another bit of software. Um, then you can import all the contact details rather than having to input everything um, from scratch. So what I'm going to do is then import that to file into zero and it will show whether it's actually worked or not. And it shows that there's four draft invoices to import. If I complete the import, it will then show these new four invoices come straight from, from the CSV file. So you can imagine if you've got... 10, 20, or even 100 invoices. Um, it's a really quick way of putting it into into zero. If they all come as a draft um, invoice, so you click on all of them and you can then approve them all, and it comes straight into the zero software. So they're all approved and they're now waiting payment. So again, just showing you the the facilities there for purchases. You can import the purchases and you can also import bank details and the contacts. So if I just go back to the sales invoice <coughs> and then show um, how easy it is then to raise statements for to send out to clients. So if I go to awaiting payment, these are all the invoices that are awaiting payment. Um, I know the best thing to do is if I show you an invoice, so I've created an invoice to myself. So if I click on the invoice, you can now view the invoice online, um, what the invoice would look like as if it was being sent um, as an email to, to, the, to the client. Um, also, what I've done is, is send that as an, e an email to myself, and you can see what that invoice looks like um, if it's emailed across. So here's my Gmail account. And there's the email I've received um, for myself showing the £240. And you can see here that you can then click through. And again, it will show you what it looks like, very similar to, to, to what I showed you before. Now, what is quite handy whilst I'm here, um, I thought I'd show you that you can actually do a pay now. So clients or customers can actually pay the invoice electronically by clicking on that button. So if they did that pay now, it will go through to um, another part of the website where if you've got a PayPal account set up, they can pay via PayPal. So that's quite a nice way of um, getting the invoices um, paid quickly. So if I go back to the software. So that's the invoicing. Um, what we'll do is show you how to set up um, the payment services, which again is quite quite easy um, if you're raising an invoice. So if you go to your general settings um, and you've got payment services here, <clears throat> and as you can see, you've got PayPal set up already, but another quite popular one is Go Cardless, where you can take credit cards um, over the internet. So you just add payment service and create um, a new account. Um, 
let me just show you how easy it is to do. And basically, it now goes away and goes to a Go Cardless website, and you can then create your Go Cardless account, and you can start accepting credit card payments online really quickly. So that's quite a neat way um, to get paid. Um, let me just go back to the invoice. Um, Right, so I'm back on to, um, right, yeah, so I'm back. If I now go to show, so they're the invoices and how to get paid um, quickly. You can see the Go card list that's pending all for, um, waiting to get all, authorized um, there. So another one, another quick tip is sending statements to clients. Um, this is quite a nice way as well. So if you go into to your sales and you can see there, you now got a tab called send statements next to the import tab. So sending statements is really quick within Xero. Um, as you can see, we've got some email addresses already set up um, for some of our clients. So you can have outstanding or activity, which is slightly different. The activity would show all the invoices um, from the beginning and what's being paid outstanding, obviously just what's outstanding at the time. So if I just change the date to the end of November and update, it will now bring in couple of invoices that I've imported and my um, email address. Um, if you haven't got an email address there, you can actually then enter it there. So you don't have to go away from the screen, enter the email address, and that will then save it, and you can send the statements. So again, really quick, you just click the statements that you want to send. If you want to print or email them, if you email them, it will then take you to this screen, showing all the email addresses. Again, you can actually input the email address is there if you need it um, and it's got a standard template email that will be sent out um, which is really cool and really quick um, so you can see how you can do a whole batch of statements um, I have got one um, from one I did earlier so you hear this is the email that I sent myself before and this is what the statement will look like when it's actually sent um, again, it's quite neat and it's quite quick. You can tailor these statements as well um, rather than having to do anything um, different. So that's really, statements really quick, really easy to find, really, really good way to try and get some money quickly. Another thing that Xero introduced about a year ago is the ability to send reminders, uh, automatic email reminders to your clients. Now again, this is set up in your general settings and if you go to invoice settings you've now got this invoice reminders tab so here if you click on the invoice reminders this will send emails out at these given dates so if an invoice is due in 10 days time it will send an email out um, and again you click on that it will show you what the email looks like and again this is customizable and you can change this um, to, to suit you and have different email addresses and different levels of authority um, and then you can have different ones you can add a reminder again really straightforward um, you can include a link um, and also send reminders for amounts I mean under a certain figure there if you don't want to send reminders out for less than a hundred pounds just change that and save it and that will then update the system um, also what I've discovered that these reminders actually get sent out between four o'clock and eight o'clock in the morning. So they won't go out instantly. So it's just then worth knowing when your clients are gonna get these email reminders. Um, another way, and also you can see your history um, of what you've been doing and what changes we've made to the reminders. To see um, a full summary of your reminders, if you go to the sales and all, you'll see now You've got um, the balances there. Well, it's not there. Um, see all. So you can see there on the right-hand side, you've got sent when they were actually sent and whether the client has actually viewed the invoice as well. Um, and it shows you there the invoice reminders are on or off. Um, 
which is quite handy. Also, you can approve, you can turn certain customers on and off whether they want reminders. So again, general settings and um, if you go to invoice settings, no, it's not there. Oh, it's contact. So if you go to contact customers, and here you'll see you've got reminders on. I've turned all the reminders on for the clients, so you can actually untick them and turn them off if you don't want reminders to go to those type, those certain customers. Maybe you don't want to send them out from there, um, which is quite a quite neat way um, if you want to do anything with reminders. So that's really cool. Um, but that's just sort of the start of it with um, email reminders to clients. So with Zero, as you know, with the ecosystem, there's there's loads of add-on partners that you can um, use to help make the process more efficient. Um, and I have got um, some add-on. So if you go to the marketplace within Zero, you can see with data tracking, you've got these guys here. Um, and we use Chaser. Um, some clients use Chaser. So it's just very similar to the Zero, but um, they're more hands on and they're more intelligent with some of their emails. So if chasing customers to pay you is important, then it's worth looking at the marketplace for all these guys um, to do some of this um, manual process automatically and it's done all at once. So it's, that's a really good um, thing to look at. So that's really to do with um, the statements, the customers, um, payment services, reminders, um, and some of the imports um, on the sales side. So what I think I was going to look at is bulk payments um, for purchases. So again, this is quite neat um, if you're paying a large amount of invoices um, through the bank. So rather than having to go through your internet banking and just mark each one, and pay them off. You can actually upload a CSV file within Zero, and then through the back system send it to your bank. Um, just a word of warning: I would do maybe two or three small ones before you actually did this live, just to make sure that the system works and the bank systems um, are working with Zero. Um, you wouldn't want to do a whole big batch to start with, so it's worth testing this out before you actually use it. Um, so again. You've got, we've got in the demo company got 14 bills that need paying. So basically you tick all the ones that you're going to pay. If they're all of them, you can tick the whole lot there. And it creates a new batch payment. So I've selected 14 bills that need to be paid. So here you just do your, your, your dates. And also whilst I'm here on dates, I thought it might be quite handy that there's some shortcuts to actually enter the date um, fields. So if you just did um, tab T, that will then put in today's date. Um, I have got some shortcut entries here um, that I thought might be handy. So tab T does today's date. If you enter TOM into the date um, field, it will then put tomorrow's date. Um, again, if you put plus 30, in, in the date tab it will then add 30 days to the to the tabs which is quite handy I can send you that um, data entry shortcuts if you need it because that might save quite a lot of time so if I go here and delete this and if I just type in TOM and tab across it puts tomorrow's date in which is quite handy bank account if I did the business bank account and the details backs say I was paying the wages um, and then again the same there max So if I then, can you now see also what you must do is have obviously the bank details. So it's picked up some of the details that are in the system through the contact um, section of zero. So you can actually, if you know the bank details, you can actually enter them there rather than going away from the screen um, in that correct format. And you just build up, so you, you're obviously going to have your bank details, otherwise the bank's not going to know who to pay. And then obviously the details there. So you can make payments and what it will do, 
it will go away and you can export the batch file into a CSV or a BAX file whichever one the bank will accept and you save that and upload that to your bank so can you see how that if you're paying a lot it will be a lot quicker um, than going through here marking them off and then doing the same through your bank system um, at the moment Zero have not done an integration with the bank I know I think in Australia they've already done this where the two will talk so as you put it in mark it off in Zero it will actually automatically through the bank feed system pay it off in um, through the bank account but we're not sure with our antiquated bank system here whether that's coming over to the UK but this is some way of making that process a little bit easier um, so that's quite cool with bulk payments um, so whilst we're on purchases I thought I'd show you maybe very quickly the, um, the ability to post purchases or expense invoices through zero using this um, folder icon here so as you can see I've created a couple of invoices previously um, and all I've done is taken a picture of an entertaining bill um, which there's a couple of ways that you can actually import this into zero so the way you can either use this email address here and you can actually put it as a download as a V card or copy to your clipboard so if you put that in your address book and then send it to that email address it will then pop up here or you can just upload um, a folder from your computer so the idea is that when they're in here you can actually post the invoice from the bill um, so the screen gets split into two again you need to twist it around and then you can start entering from the bill um, and again the due date if I just do plus 30 it then puts in 30 days which is quite handy rather than use the menu and then the reference and as you can see is kept a copy of that invoice within zero as well so really you don't really you don't need to file this invoice because you've got electronic copy here um, and then you can post the invoice as normal so that's quite a neat um, way of doing posting your purchase invoices again there's quite a few um, add-on partners in this market um, this works where you maybe haven't got a lot of invoices and it's quite an easy system um, it's, it's a quick system and it's easy but if you've got a lot of purchase invoices then Receipt Bank um, is, is one of the leaders in this field and they can do expense claims and makes this process so much quicker when you're posting your purchase ledger um, and also what we find is that people use this facility to put anything in there not just invoices so people have put in their contracts and you can open up new files um, bank statements is a popular one where they're doing the bank reconciliation um, just create a folder save it and then just upload the bank statements and you can start using this as a bit of a document management system which is quite nice um, so that's covered purchases from zero files we've done the, um, the date shortcuts bank feeds really quickly um, anyone who's not using a bank feed should be using bank feeds really quick way to set it up um, again every bank is different the way that their systems work some use pin century card readers some um, you can have direct bank feeds and the main one with HSBC and Santander and Metro you can have these direct feeds that hit your bank account as it hits your zero as it hits your bank account so again they're the best way to get the bank bank information into zero you can always import a statement like we did before the same setup you can browse and import from a CSV template and so forth um, which is much better than inputting everything um, transaction by transaction um, what I was going to do just sort of to 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 wrap up um, because I've covered quite a bit um, at quite a pace but what I thought is this plus box which again is quite nice uh, not many people know about it but basically you can then enter and transactions any from 
into zero using the plus box rather than having to work out where to go. You can do this straight from there. So if you want to write into a bill, you can do it from there. If you want to receive money or transfer money, again, you can do it from there, which is quite quick rather than having to go through a couple of um, clicks. You can do it that way. Um, also, what I was going to do is, is show the search facility. The search facility is really good. On the demo company, unfortunately, it doesn't allow you to show it. So there is a video here um, which you can watch, um, which is in the um, help center regarding the search facility. But basically, you can just find anything um, within within zero, within zero um, which would be really good to use. Another thing is the contact center. Um, a lot of clients don't really use this, but th this contacts is really good to see an overall picture of any of your of, of any information regarding the customer or supplier. So, for example, you were trying to look for something. Um, say there was an invoice that you were trying to find, so you just type that in. You click on my contact, and basically it's like a summary of everything that's happened on that account so if there you can see invoices that have been erased and invoices that have been approved you can see there how much over the last 12 months have been sent you can see the activity what's been happened on that that statement's been sent invoices been sent it's been approved um, you can start making notes in there which is quite handy if you do maybe credit control you can just add a note um, called to pay bill um, Again, you can save that, and you've then got um, an, a history of what's happened there. Also, you can actually connect Office 365 or Gmail to here. So any emails that are sent to that client or customer or supplier then get stored here, which again is really, really quick um, and just basically um, gives you an overall um, picture of what's going on with that customer. So it's worth, if you're trying to find anything, find an invoice, a copy of an invoice, or any anything to do with that client is worth looking in customers and even the same with suppliers you get exactly the same information um, which is quite neat a way to start finding stuff and that's all really the search facility does it will show basically a summary of everything in here but really quickly if you're trying to find something so it's definitely worth using those um, buttons at the top there um, to find anything um, I think that's about it for now. Um, I don't want to do too much at once, but I've covered some of the important things. Um, whilst I am here, I think the account watch list is a really good place as well to put any um, nominal accounts or any information you want to keep an eye on quickly rather than having to go and look for it. Um, so the account watch list is generated. If you clicked on, sorry, if maybe did that too quick. If you just clicked on there it does the hyperlink and if it, for example we wanted to keep an eye on IT consumables within there there's the tip box to show it on the watch the watch list and if we go back you will see that now that's added to there which is quite nice again if any of you want to keep an eye on anything um, which is quite an important um, account within, that's it within thank the you business. very much for listening and speak to you soon bye